I was the little girl who never dreamed of her marriage and never dreamed nor wondered if she would have children. In fact, I was most uninterested in anything that didn't deal with books, learning, basketball, college, and imagination. As the one of the youngest on both sides of my family, I had my share of brief babysitting adventures that led me to believe that having children simply removed any freedom to dream or read the day away. So it makes total sense that I would fall in love with, in college with a graduate student who wanted nothing more than to be married and have six children. <laughs> Subtly and overtly pressured by random comments and my own political beliefs, I decided to get married. And while in the first semester of graduate school at the age of 22, I also decided to get pregnant. I always knew that I wanted to raise my children in very specific ways that aligned themselves with my sometimes unique system of beliefs, but I had no idea what I was truly signing up for. My children are accustomed to being the child of a feminist. Before they went to school, they didn't think twice about having a mother with extra short hair, listening to music that never landed on the radio, and having intensive, slick-talking conversations with women and men in her living room day into the next morning. The child of a non-Christian feminist simply accepts there will be no tree and no carols but we may hit up those sales at the few last few days of the year. <laughs> they know that the four hours of TV they do get to watch each week, well, it will be dissected and analyzed for racism, sexism, classism. This lifestyle, so free and direct, is easy, really easy, before the world touches you, before you know anything different. More than the pursuit of money, successful partnerships or marriage, I want three things for my children. I want them to be happy, educated, and have the greatest sense of social justice that they could possibly become the most irritating person at a social event of any kind. Feminism is, after all, about equality based on gender. It is about choice, freedom, and social responsibility. Feminism isn't hard at all but living the truth of it does get a little sticky. Stereotypes do not get to live in the head of a feminist. Each person has to be considered by how they define themselves and how others, and not how others define them. My feminism has bitten me several times right in the butt. <laughs> when Trayvon Martin was murdered, my immediate response was to forever get rid of my son's favorite John Cena, Sanborn and Jackson State hoodie. I was panicking, acting in fear, and my son said, I am not going to stop wearing hoodies. It doesn't matter anyway, and I am going to be who I am. Feminism is about fearlessness, dealing with your stuff, and it was difficult to allow him, but I did. Each day he enters one of the top prep schools in Kansas City, casually wearing the clothes that he wants to wear. Hey. We live in a patriarchy, so I can get used to some things. But my son is pretty much a liberal Republican. <laughs> he doesn't really need to speak loud. He just needs to speak often, and he has to break everything down. But oh, that girl, that little baby girl that came into this world with the most drama my life had ever seen. She doesn't follow anyone's rules except her own. My rules, which seem loose by many standards, are still too strict for her. Yet, she has this prudish and private side that I can't even wrap my head around. On Friday, if she's had a good week, she can wear red lipstick to school. Some teachers judge her with their stares, and her peers often seethe with jealousy, wondering how someone that age can wear all that red. My daughter, a fourth wave feminist, has very different views about navigating her womanhood. It is complete with makeup, no earrings, short clothes, a thong underwear, and stilettos. <laughs> Being a stripper is simply an occupation that involves dance and cheer moves. And Brittany Griner, the WNBA star, is someone she would date if she were a boy. 
The beauty of children is that regardless of where you live on the line from left to right, conservative to liberal, gay to straight, your children will challenge your notions of life and living. Children born out of your labor do an amazing job of holding a playful mirror to your face. They help you to understand why you stand for what you stand for. And sometimes, many times, they disagree. To teach your children personal freedom is to teach them personal power. If they do not stray away from your teachings, they are simply robots repeating what you want them to say. When they have voice and opinions and ideas and beliefs outside of how you've raised them, to me, that means you've raised them right. My feminism is four plus generations strong, and from it I have learned that freedom of choice and expression are but the greatest gifts any mother could ever give. Thank you.